Good day viewers, my name is Darlene Sinokoka and I welcome you to the with Electrical YouTube channel. Today we shall be discussing on a very important issue or topic called the circuit breaker, a complete guide. Circuit breakers are very important in our electrical circuit. It is an electrical switch that prevents a circuit from overcurrent, over voltage and ground fault. So you see that any circuit, have you ever asked yourself that when you are in a, your house and you mistakenly use the um, live and neutral to touch themselves and nothing happens, a breaker just strips off and your system continues. So that is the function of a breaker. So we are going to see the various types of breakers we have, their uses, their functions and how they break. So that whenever you are carrying out your own design, you should be able to know the type of breakers you are going to use. So whenever a circuit breaker prevents your system from further damage, it has saved you a lot of cost. Instead of the entire system to get damaged, just the circuit breaker trips. So what you need to do, you trace the fault. When you trace the fault, then immediately put on the breaker back and your system is back to normal. So now we're going to go into the categories of circuit breaker. These categories of circuit breaker it helps us to separate um, breakers into how they trip whenever there is a fault. So we have the thermomagnetic circuit breaker. The thermomagnetic circuit breaker are those type of circuit breaker that trips whenever there is a, a fault, or, or other overcurrent or ground fault. Automatically it trips. It doesn't need a third party to make it trip. The second type is the electronic circuit breaker. Now the electronic circuit breaker depends on instructions, maybe like a relay. A relay will tell it that there is an overcurrent somewhere, so you have to trip, so it trips. It doesn't trip on its own. It, it has an instruction from somewhere, from an electronic circuit, like a relay, that will give you that information before it cuts supply. Then the third one is advanced breakers. Now, most of, you see a 33 KV system, you see 132, all these are advanced um, breakers. They have coordinated and selectivity production devices attached to it. So this one, you have, there are some settings you need to put. I will show you in course of this, uh, class i will show you the very how, how you are like the micrologic um circuit breaker you see that you can tune the setting to suit whatsoever instruction the timing and the rest so these are advanced circuit breakers so now we're going to go into the various types of circuit breaker we have so these types of circuit breaker are, are, are based on the categories I've, I've given to you now so there are some you have the low voltage circuit breakers you have the medium voltage circuit breakers and you have the high voltage circuit breakers under the low voltage circuit breakers these are circuit breakers that operate less than 2k uh, 2 kilovolts so like our systems or uh, uh, our low voltage systems maximum is 4 or 5 volts in nigeria for your three phase while you have 220 for your single phase so that is based on the voltage ratings which is maximum 2 kilo 2 kv but the current rating differs so that's why we're going to be talking about the miniature circuit breakers, our normal MCB. Our normal MCBs are usually found in all residential buildings, wherever you find your distribution board, you see your miniature circuit breaker. These breakers are, are, are rated. The maximum rating most times is 100 amps. So you can get the 10 amps, you can get the 15 amps, 20, 25, 30, 45, and the rest. So depend on the load you want to connect to. So I'll show you an example. Under this miniature circuit breaker, we have the single. So you see this, this is a single pole breaker. What you need to do, you connect your life to it while the breaker is connected to the breaker of the distribution board. Then this other one is a two pole. You can see that we have a two pole breaker. So this one now, you can connect both live and neutral to this one and it breaks automatically. This is also a miniature circuit breaker two pole. Now, this one, I know all of us know this. This, this also a, you, you, you can see that it has, it's a two pole. When you look at it inside, it's a two pole for your live and neutral, but it's usually used for, it has a higher rating. This is 63 amps. But how do you make use of this miniature circuit breaker? We have, this is a single phase distribution board, as you can see, a single phase distribution. This is your main switch. So your life comes here, your, this is your neutral bar and this is your edge bar. Now, all these are where you connect your load to. So you can actually connect your lighting point, your ACs, and whatever to all these breakers. So this is the breaker that loops your load to the distribution board that you have your protection to. So you must connect it to this protection. So now, the wire, 
look at it it's, it has a connecting point here you connect your wire to this place and how do you how does it get contact you see this is the contact point you put the contact point inside and you connect it so you see automatically it's fixed so whenever this, this is a 10 amps load so usually you're supposed to connect a lighting point to this several lighting points you have the maximum point so it, this is has an automatic trip Whenever there is a current, whenever there is a false current, maybe this load has been rated for like your total lighting point is 7 amps. If there is a fault, there is no high to not be more than 80 to 90 amps. And this is rated like 10 amps. So automatically, it trips. So until you clear the fault and you go and manually turn it up, this particular, all the load connected to this breaker will not have power supply. So this is a single phase breaker. So we also have a three phase breaker. This has been connected. This is a this is a three phase. This is a three phase distribution board. If you look at it, you have red, yellow, blue. So this is connected to the red phase. This is connected to the red phase. This is yellow. This is connected to yellow phase, blue phase. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 twelve. So this is called a four-way three phase distribution board. Why is it four way? Because one way has three phase. This is one way. This is two ways. This is three way. This is four way. So you can, it's, it's a three phase load. If you have a three phase load, like there are so many motors that have three phase, you can decide if the, if the motor doesn't have a high in rush current, you could decide to connect it, the three phase to this one. Connect the three phase to this one. But if you have a distribution that your, your loads are separate, maybe your AC is single phase. So you could decide to connect your first AC to this place, second phase to this place, third phase to this place. But it's advisable that when you are using a three phase distribution board for a single phase load, you must do load balancing. You must not allow all the load to be on the red phase. So if you, are, you cannot say you are connecting AC to this place, you are connecting lighting to this place, you are connecting fan to this place, then connect AC to this place. By the time you do that, you see that all the red phase are overloaded, while the yellow phase are not loaded. So what I usually advise, if you are, if you are using this, three phase db for a single phase load make sure you balance the load if you are connecting ac here make sure you connect ac here make sure you connect ac here so that the load will balance so don't put too much load on one phase that will lead to a load the load balances will not be good you overload a phase this is for a three phase load okay the second type of low voltage circuit breaker we have is the modded case circuit breaker the slide is on the screen so you, you see that this modest modded case circuit breaker is similar it has a similar operation to the miniature circuit breaker mcb but the only difference is that the current rating that is exceeded by a mcb you use the mccb because mccb has a capacity to carry more load current than the M normal mcb so mcb and mccb perform the same function but mccb carries more current rating than mcb the third one is residual current circuit breaker now the residual current circuit breaker is something like this it is it is designed to eliminate ground fault so you, you see you see the lighting point here something like this so it's, it's like a miniature circuit breaker but it's its own facility is for ground fault now when your ground fault is not good you, 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 are, you are making a lot of mistake because your, your, your entire system on, on, a, on a day might just get burnt as a result of its problem. But when you have, when you have a residual um, circuit breaker, whenever there's an earth fault and your earth bit is not good, it trips off. By the time it trips off and before it gets to ground, your equipment is safe. So these are the three main types of low voltage circuit breaker. The second part is the medium circuit breaker. Now the medium voltage circuit breaker is there are the various types the first type we have is the air circuit breaker now the air circuit breaker have an arc extension now whenever there is whenever there is a high voltage automatically the arc breaks up and you have your equipment safe so it's usually used for medium voltage and when i talk about medium voltage i'm talking about your 11 kv system so you could use your air circuit breaker for 11 kv breakage of load current the second one is the vacuum circuit breaker now i'm going to show you a vacuum circuit breaker now this vacuum circuit breaker as you can see this is this is a this is a vacuum this is a vacuum circuit breaker 
Now, the advantage of this vacuum circuit breaker is that it's a protection system. It functions based on the dielectric that it's used to break is vacuum. It's very, it, it trips on it, it triggers on its own. When there's a device, a, a, a fault, it breaks. You see? It trips. So this is a vacuum circuit breaker. By the, by the time you see all those cabinets as, as shown on your screen, you will see all those panels, big, big panels. These are the things inside the panel. There's nothing special about this. You will see it based on how it's located. You connect to your system. This is your output. This is this side is the input. You have the input here, the three-phase input and the three-phase output. When you have it, exactly, you just, you just see it beautiful on the panel. It's just a normal circuit breaker. The, the, the third one we're going to talk about is the XF6 circuit breaker. This is called sulfur hexafluoride circuit breaker. This, this uses a system whereby it pressurizes the SF6. SF6 is a gas. It, it, it pressurizes it into a chamber by that time tripping off a fault. So SF6 are usually mostly used in big um, systems to make sure that for mostly for big systems to make sure that your system is what protected. Then the fourth one is oil circuit breaker. This is beginning to be fade, it's fading out uh, gradually. It's usually used for outdoor purposes. But because of the advent of vacuum circuit breaker, it has taken over the functionality of the SF6, of the oil circuit breaker. So most times you hardly find the oil circuit breakers in, on the site. Then the third one, which is the last one, is high voltage circuit breaker. All the functionality of the medium voltage circuit breaker is also what you find in the high voltage circuit breaker. You have the air blast circuit breaker, which is a type of the high voltage circuit breaker. You, you have the vacuum circuit breaker too, but the only difference is that their voltage rating is higher. So wh whenever you are using, for the medium voltage, you are using maximum of 35 kilovolts. But for high voltage, all your breakers can withstand 35 kilovolts and above. So you still have the air blast circuit breaker, you have the vacuum circuit breaker, you have the SLCs, and you have the oil circuit breaker. So now we're going to discuss the part of the circuit breaker. What makes this circuit breaker to trip on its own? And what are the things that triggers? So as, as you can see on my screen now, we have, you see this diagram here, we, we have five big major parts of the circuit breaker. The first one on the screen, as, as shown here, is the frame. You see this frame here? The frame is, the, the molded frame has the compartment, it has the compartment of the entire circuit breaker. It helps to provide strength. You know, most times when the circuit breaker wants to break, it's as a result of overcurrent. So it's, it, it, it spreads. But if the compartment is not strong, it can burst and affect the operator. So the frame is usually built to withstand those kind of shock so that it doesn't explode. So that's why you find it here by its side. Then the second one is the operating mechani mechanism. So the operating mechanism, as can be shown on this screen now, is it provides a means of opening and closing the circuit. Now, the circuit breaker is connected. It's like, it's like a switch, your lighting switch. It opens and it closes. It opens and it closes. So that mechanism that makes it open and close is called the operating mechanism. The third one, as shown too, is the contact. So the contact allows current to flow through the circuit breaker when it is closed. Now, you see this point here. On, if you see this point that is like a, a, a copper bar. So it's this, it's this copper band that triggers it that connects the opening and the closing of the circuit. Now the fourth one is the arc extinguisher. The arc extinguisher is the component that extinguishes an arc when, connects arc, when the contacts are open. Now when you, something is connected like this and there's a fault, it opens. Now when it opens, this current that is coming, it has to go somewhere. So before it explodes, there's an arc extinguisher that comes in to envelop the entire current for that moment. So that is called the arc extinguisher. So when it opens like this and the arc comes in, it envelops it to prevent it from exploding. Then the last one is the trip circuit. The trip circuit during prolonged overcurrent or um, short circuit, it trips. It's when it senses an abnormal high current, it, that is when it trips automatically and you say your breaker has performed. So by the time it doesn't trip, you know that your breaker has failed. And when your breaker fails, it's very dangerous. It can affect 
your entire system because it's a protection system. Now we'll go to the ratings. How circuit breakers are rated. Uh, we're going to have a different topic on why we're going to calculate the ratings of a circuit breaker. But before we, that will be in a subsequent class. But for this class, we're going to see how circuit breakers are being rated. Circuit breaker can be rated based on the handle size. Like this now. If you, if, if, if you look at this now, you, you could see that it's rated 63 amps. If you look at this particular one I showed you initially, you see that this is the, hand, this is the handle. It's rated 10 amps. So the handle size, you could use the handle size to rate a circuit breaker. Somebody can tell you that give me a handle size, of, a, a circuit breaker of 10 amps. What you just need to do, check the handle and you see the rating of the circuit breaker. The second one is the frame size. The frame size is very important. Now, you, you, you see that there are various circuit breakers, 10 amps but different frames. 20 amps but different frames. So the frame gives you the withstand of the current that is going to carry. But most times people don't consider the frame size when looking for circuit breakers. They just say, give me 10 amps, give me 20 amps and they go. But the frame size, when, when you are dealing with low voltage or low core, when you are dealing with low voltages, you don't have a problem. But by the time you start going to medium and high voltage, you know that frame size is very important. Now the third one is sensor rating or plug rating. This is also very important. The plug rating is the rating that gives you is the, is the rating that gives you that, that current that it at which it, it breaks. Now when you see a circuit breaker, you are going to see it, um, two different types of current. You are going to see the frame size current and you are going to see the plug rating. You can see the frame size circuit to be like 3200 amps and you see the plug rating to be 2500 amps. Now, it's telling you that at the time it exceeds 2500, it trips. Then the 3200 tells you that by the time that inrush enters this hand, you are going to have 3000 500 so the frame should be able to withstand 3200 amps current the fourth one is short circuit rating we're going to do a calculation on short circuit rating this is whenever there's a, a short circuit a short circuit in the system the current rating that it can withstand is called the short circuit rating so circuit breakers can be rated based on short circuit then applicable voltages so there are some breakers that can work with 220 volts 415 volts 11 kV and the rest. So you must know the voltage rating that you want to use your circuit breaker for. Then the last one is short circuit withstand capacity. This is rated in kilo amps. So that sometimes you see a circuit breaker, it will tell you that it's 2500, but for the withstand uh, current, it's telling you like 35 kilo amps, that's 35,000 amps. So that is the withstand. Whenever there is a short circuit in a system, I tell you, the, you, you will see that the current that is supposed to be passing at like 2,000 or 1,000 amps, you'll be seeing over 25,000 amps. So your circuit breaker should be able to withstand that capacity. So I believe I've been able to explain vividly what circuit breakers are and the importance of having a circuit breaker in your circuit to prevent damages to your equipment. If this video has been very useful to you, please kindly click on the subscription button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our channel too so that you'll be able to get subsequent videos that we're going to post on our channel, especially the calculation of circuit breaker. Mm -hmm.